Hello and welcome to a dev named Josh. I'm a dev named Josh. And this is the second video in the, I don't know what I'm gonna call this series yet, the Godot 4 for beginners? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so we last time we kind of installed uh, Godot 4, we started this brand new project and we set the layout slightly different. If you don't understand what any of these do, we also talked about, uh, kind of did a tour of the engine talked about like what each of these panels is for the most part. We haven't talked about import. We haven't talked about node uh, panel yet. That's okay, we're gonna get there. Uh, probably not in this video, maybe? We'll see. So where we left off is we have this root node and we have this my scene. So today we're gonna talk about nodes and scenes almost exclusively. So to begin, we need to understand what is a node? So We've seen these nodes already, but let's talk about it a little bit more. A node is like a building block for your game. Typically they have pieces of functionality associated with them are cool things that you probably want. And when you combine them together, it can make very uh, powerful scenes. Now I explained this a little bit in the last video, but scenes are just collections of nodes that work together to accomplish something. Uh, a level is a scene in the case of this uh, root node. Um, if I close down the uh, this tab here, uh, we're no longer inside of any scenes. Now we can create a new scene if we want to, or we can open an existing scene. And you're gonna notice that scenes in Godot uh, have the ending file extension TSCN. And what that stands for is text scene, I think. Uh, essentially, uh, it's a scene that is represented by like text. If that's a little bit hard to uh, understand, uh, the best way to show that off would be for me to go into the projects folder where we have Godot 4, go into my twin stick shooter, and then we can see the, f uh, <clears throat> the exact same files and everything here that you would see in the uh, file system panel in the engine. Uh, if I just right click, like my level. I'm gonna open it with code. If you don't know uh, what VS Code is, do not worry, you do not need to know. I am simply opening this to show you how it is represented. So this is how a text scene actually looks. It is a text format and it has a bunch of information that we're not gonna get into. Um, but essentially like this is what is what kind of represents that node, that collection of nodes and its purpose, okay? Uh, this is awesome, by the way, because having your scenes represented like this, uh, it might come at like a performance cost, um, but uh, if you're using source control, you can actually see the changes that have been made. And for the most part, it's reasonable or it's uh, reasonably readable, right? We can see a path here and we know from inside of our file system that we have that res folder and it's my scene. It, got, it has an ID here. It's probably pretty distinct ID, whatever. Um, the name is my scene. The parent is nothing. It's root. You know what I mean? Uh, it's got, yeah. So all this is that. So going back into the engine, um, a scene is represent represents that collection of nodes. So if I double click on my scene, you'll notice we are in an empty scene right now. If I double click it, we open my scene and we can see that collection of nodes that we turned into a scene last time. Um, if I go to my level, we can see that scene that also has my scene inside of it. This is awesome because it means that we can pa uh, package functionality and collections of nodes into scenes and then instantiate them. In fact, I can have as many my scenes as I want to inside of this root scene. Um, now we never changed the name of the actual node here at the top of the scene. And that's what's actually showing up when we instantiate, right? So I'm gonna delete these. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my scene and I'm just going to name it my scene to make that example a little more clear. Control S to save, and then I'll come back here. And now if I want to, I can drag in these, uh, I can instantiate different uh, versions of the scene, right? This is very similar to how 
Unity does prefabs, but it's different. And I think in a way it's more powerful personally. Um, and it's probably more like the way blueprints work because you can actually use inheritance in scenes. They're really, really cool. So enough about that. Let's delete my scenes. I'm actually going to delete uh, my scene and my level, both of these from the previous example when we were given the tour of the engine. And I'm just gonna close it. I'm not gonna save. I'm not gonna save. And now here I am, I'm starting from scratch. Everything's blank. So what I wanna do is I want an initial level. That's what we're gonna do. So we are going to create a scene. Now again, this is going to create a node, but a scene is just a collection of nodes with a root node. So when I click create a scene there, it made this root node, which is gonna hold all of the other nodes that we're going to add into it, right? So I'm gonna call this uh, main level, if I could spell level. All right, and then I'm just really quickly gonna control S and save it. Now, I don't like uh, to use snake case for my scene names. Uh, I will do it when I get into GD script, you'll see it a lot, but I prefer to have them Pascal case. So all the beginning of each word capital and no spaces, right? So main level, it's just how I prefer it. You don't have to do that way if you don't want to, you can go with the default recommendation there if you'd like. So we have our main level now and we need some stuff in our level for it to actually make some sort of sense, right? If we were to play the game right now, it'd be extremely boring because there's nothing happening, but we have a level. In fact, if I press play right now, there's no main scene or no main scene has ever been defined. Select one. You can change it later in project settings under the application category. So if I say select current, what this is going to do is it's going to set the main scene or the default scene for the uh, game. So basically the entry point for our game to main level. So I'm gonna select current because that's fine. And we'll see, our game is running. There is nothing to do in it, but that's okay. So we're gonna close down this window. So as I said, a scene is a collection of nodes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna very quickly make a player, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and you can either right click to add a node or you can click on the node that you want to add a node to. Uh, and you can add a child node using this plus icon, or the way I prefer to do it is I'll just hit control A and it will bring up this, this window. And then I'm gonna type in character body 2D. Uh, this is called kinematic body 2D in Godot 3.4 and anything uh, other than uh, Godot 4 at the moment. I don't know what their plans are with 3.5 or if that's getting a name change there, but uh, in previous versions, this is known as kinematic body 2D. We want to add this node. We're not going to super talk about what uh, character body 2D does quite yet, but know that this gives us the ability to control, take manual control of physics for like our character. Okay. So it's the perfect thing to use as the root for our character. The next thing we're going to do is we want to represent, and we can see when we click on a node, uh, the little plus icon over here will highlight. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add another node and we're going to do a sprite. We want to be able to see our character, right? So we'll get a sprite 2D. And then over here in the sprite, you'll notice nothing popped up here still. Like it, it exists, but nothing has shown up. So the reason for that is we need to add a texture. The texture is the actual like image that's going to show. And there's this handy icon PNG down here for Godot Engine. It comes with every project you make. Just drag that into the texture, and that will be our placeholder. As we can see, our player now has the default Godot face. Uh, pretty standard. Definitely want to change that out later. Okay, so now we have our uh, character body. We have our sprite. We're also going to want the character to be able to collide with things. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control A and we're going to add in a collision shape 2D. You can also do collision polygon 2D and you can manually kind of map out the shape of, of the collider. Collision shape 2D, a uh, little bit easier, but we can add it and now we can add a shape to the collision shape to actually give our character collision. What that is going to look like is it's going to be uh, over here in the shape. Now you'll notice we have a little caution sign. It is telling us a shape must be provided 
for collision shape 2D to function. Please create a shape resource for it. So if we come over here to the shape, we can actually click on the drop down here. Uh, and where it says empty now, we can choose something like a uh, new circle shape 2D. And if we zoom in, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but we get this circle, uh, which is that collision shape. And now if we click on this little blue icon, we can drag it to the right and it will expand evenly and then we'll get it just about right. And there we go. Our character is set up. Now, um, so in this main level scene, we currently have a character body 2D, a sprite, a collision shape. I'm going to double click here and I'm going to rename the character body 2D to player character. Okay. Um, and now we probably want, we probably don't want the character and the sprite and the collision shape to just be attached to the scene. We might want to use this character in other levels, right? So what we'll do is with the uh, root of whatever we want to make a new scene out of selected. So in our case, we want to package everything that involves the player into a different scene that we can instantiate. So with player character selected, we're going to right click and we're going to come down and say save branch as scene. All right. And then we see it. We see that it wants to name it a player character. That's fine. I'm going to hit save. And now you'll notice I can't expand player character anymore and see the nodes in this scene. They don't belong to this scene, this level, right? Instead, they belong solely to the player character. Now, in order to view the player character, I guess, and the nodes that are there, we either need to double click on player character down here in the file system, or you can use this little scene clapper to open an editor. And when we do that, uh, not much change on the screen, um, but we essentially sh uh, switch scenes from main level, which has kind of our Godot character. Now, because this is because the character is instantiated here in this scene, uh, we can actually move it to like the middle of what it is going to be the camera view. And then if we click on player scene, you'll notice that this one's still at the top left. And for the most part, you want to keep it at top left uh, of, I say top left, in the, this is the middle, this is true middle. This is the Y axis and this is the X axis. So it is on zero, zero. That is what it's transform is on. Back on the main level, I've moved its transform away from zero, zero uh, somewhere else. So here we have a scene and we can see that this scene is just a collection of nodes. So we have our uh, character body 2D, which is going to handle like our physics and our movement. It's actually going to, because it's the root node, it's also going to hold our script for uh, in the next videos when we make player movement. We have a sprite that's handling like the display of the character and we have a collision shape which is going to handle actually colliding with things, right? So all these are working together and now we have this scene. Like I said before, they kind of work, this kind of works like a Unity Prefab or a Unreal Engine Blueprint in that we can define all of its nodes and piece together its functionality with those building blocks. And then we can use it inside of our levels, inside of our game and other places. And uh, it kind of helps us uh, not only abstract a lot of like the moving parts, like the player character is going to function how we tell it to function. We don't need to see the child nodes um, that make it up, right? I don't need to see the sprite in this scene. If I want to mess with a sprite, I need to see it inside of this scene, which is defining what the player looks like and all of its functionality. So that's a little bit about how like the scenes and the nodes work, okay? So I'm going to save the main level and I'm going to press play. And what you'll notice is that our character is here. Now, the character doesn't do anything. And in the next videos, we're going to talk about GD script and like Specifically, I'm going to go over uh, the static typing version of GD script where we can kind of have some uh, type safety and all that. And we're going to set up the building blocks and the foundation for how to move this character. All right. This has been a dev named Josh. Take care.